You know, one of the charming little phrases that really seems to be doing the rounds these days is toxic fandoms. And holy shit are they tearing the arse out of this one. It seems like everywhere you look there's a tidal wave of hand-wringing, self-righteous op-eds bemoaning the toxic state of whatever fandom is currently in the news. Star Wars, Star Trek, Ghostbusters, Lord of the Rings, shit man, even Halo fans are toxic now apparently. So what the fuck's going on? Why is every fandom suddenly more hazardous to your health than a two-week self-catering holiday in Chernobyl? Well, all of this stuff came to a bit of a head recently when Moses Ingram, one of the main actors in Kenobi, shared a couple of samples of the abuse she'd been getting on Instagram. Nasty stuff that she absolutely didn't deserve. But what's even more interesting is the media firestorm that erupted in the wake of it. Suddenly articles started popping up everywhere complaining about the toxic state of the Star Wars fandom, how it's riddled with ists and phobes, and how something needs to be done, goddammit. Even the official Star Wars Twitter account decided to weigh in on the situation because, you know, insulting your own fanbase and lumping everyone into the same basket is a surefire way to get people on your sides. Now, if I was a cynical man, I'd say it almost looks like this controversy wasn't just something they were prepared for, it's something they were practically counting on. Because if you're able to focus everyone's attention on allegations of abuse and discrimination against one of your actors, then suddenly all the actual criticisms of your show get conveniently forgotten about. Because let's be honest here, who cares about the opinions of a group of toxic haters that were never going to be happy anyway? But here's the problem. The overwhelming majority of the criticism for this show had absolutely nothing to do with one particular actress, much less the innate characteristics she was born with. Based on pretty much every video and Twitter post that I've seen on this subject, people are annoyed because it's becoming increasingly obvious with every passing episode that Kenobi isn't really really about Kenobi. It's just another example of Lucasfilm milking a popular legacy character for their name recognition, then altering their personality, removing most of their agency, charisma, resilience, skill and intelligence, and generally diminishing them so they can play second fiddle to the new original character that the show is actually focused on. And I think that infamous tweet from the official Star Wars account gave away more than they'd intended. Now pay attention 007 because this bit's important. They are excited for Reva's story to unfold. I think that tells you pretty much everything you need to know about the writer's intentions here. The show might be called Kenobi, but it's actually Reva's story. It's a classic bait and switch tactic to drum up interest in something that most people wouldn't have given a shit about. Lucasfilm have been lying to their own fan base, promising one thing but delivering something else, and now that they've been found out, what do they do? Well, they could take the criticism on the chin, acknowledge that what they delivered may not have been what was promised, and ask people to judge the show on its own merits. Or they could create a manufactured controversy to simultaneously draw attention away from their devious skullduggery and publicly discredit their most vocal critics. I wonder which one they chose. It was basically the same deal with Star Trek Discovery. A lot of people had some pretty valid criticisms of main character Michael Burnham, namely that she was a very obvious retcon inserted into a storyline that she was never meant to be part of, that the writers diminished and undermined established legacy characters to elevate her to borderline messiah who solves almost every problem single-handed, or that she generally comes across as arrogant, self-righteous, disrespectful, impulsive and insubordinate without ever answering for these flaws. But no, clearly toxic fans just hated her because of her gender and skin colour, ignoring the fact that there's been decades of popular characters of every race, sex and species long before Saint Michael was ever dreamed up. Or how about Ghostbusters 2016? Were fans angry because the studio shit-canned a sequel they'd been wanting for years and instead delivered a dumb, cartoonish, painfully unfunny reboot that absolutely nobody asked for, directed by a man with zero understanding of the subject matter? Or did they just hate it because women bad? Or how about Rings of Power? Do you think Tolkien fans are pushing back against the show's very obvious attempts to twist and alter the lore of a classic and beloved fantasy world and infuse it with divisive 21st century sensibilities and ideology? Or do you think they just instinctively lose their minds at the prospect of different levels of melanin being shown on screen? What all this comes down to is another little phrase that started to pop up quite a bit in recent years. Crafting the narrative. 
See, most people aren't really driven by dry facts and figures and data points because those things have to be studied in detail and understood and interpreted and all of that takes time and effort. And that's a real problem because people today are usually too busy, too distracted by a dozen other demands on their attention or just too fucking lazy to do actual research of their own. What they need instead is something that generates a visceral emotional reaction to get them engaged. A series of extreme sensationalised examples strung together into a simple, cohesive easy to digest opinion, i.e. a narrative. And if that opinion happens to line up with what they already believe, because they've been told the same thing by a bunch of other sources, then so much the better. And that's exactly what we're seeing now, a very obvious attempt to craft a new narrative and use it to shame and ridicule anyone who dares to criticise their work. This movie isn't actually shit, it's just the work of toxic fans who are never happy with anything. This character isn't badly written, unlikable, or awkwardly inserted into a story they don't belong in, it's just toxic fans who can't stand to see diversity or inclusion. This actor didn't deliver an unconvincing performance or make a bunch of dumb statements in real life, the backlash against them is just down to a fundamentally toxic fandom. Every single time, the same accusations of bigotry and toxicity get flung around like monkeys throwing their poo at each other, but what does any of this actually accomplish except to piss off and alienate the very people that you're trying to appeal to? Moderate fans who might have had a few issues with shows like Kenobi, but generally still support new Star Wars projects, are going to feel like they're being unfairly labelled as something that they're not. People who were already hostile to Disney and Lucasfilm are going to have their opinions vindicated by a company that seems determined to antagonise them. This constant cycle of social media sniping, suspiciously timed hit piece articles and preachy opinion pieces only serves to contribute to a general atmosphere of animosity and resentment between fans and studios. The more you bite back at your fans and try to score short term victories over them, the more you'll piss them off in the long run and the less forgiven they'll be of your next project. This means more criticism of your work, which in turn leads to more counter-attacks and, well, I think you get the drift. Like Star Trek Picard showrunner Michael Chabon, who straight up admitted that he made certain creative decisions simply to provoke and piss off elements of the fan base that he decided were toxic. Now ask yourself a serious question. Do you really think this kind of spiteful, childish bullshit is going to win people over to your side? Basically what I'm saying here is that if you treat your own fans like enemies, then that's exactly what you're going to make them. Now all that being said, I don't doubt for a second that there are some genuinely shitty individuals out there and they should rightly be called out for their bigotry, but that's exactly what they are, individuals. They don't represent the larger fan base they claim to be part of, and trying to tar everyone with the same brush is disingenuous as fuck. Toxicity isn't some convenient label that you can just slap on anyone who dares to criticise you. It's not a magical shield to protect you from negative feedback. Criticising bad storytelling isn't toxic. Criticising a director who delivered a poor product, an actor who turned in a bad performance or said stupid things in real life isn't toxic. If people have a problem with the story that you've told, the characters you've written, or even the opinions you've expressed in public, then they have every right to call you out on it. You're not obliged to listen to them, but you don't get to silence or discredit them just because you don't like what they're saying. Because if those are the kind of underhanded tactics that you find yourself relying on, then maybe it's time you start asking yourself who the toxic one really is. Anyway. That's all I've got for today. Go away now.